Sorry, apologies. Councillors Cotier, Hobel, Rennie and Stapleton. Are there any further apologies? Okay, I just want to make some small um, announcements, and they are small, because I realise uh, we've got a long agenda this evening. just want to just highlight um, some of the activities we've been involved in, Lady Ferris and myself, over the last two months. And obviously I can only sort of highlight a few. One of the most interesting ones was um, the great get-together in Birkenhead. And this was outside Birkenhead Library on, um, on a Saturday morning and afternoon. And it was an opportunity for the mayoress and myself to meet, to meet diverse communities in Birkenhead, share their experiences and their cultures and, and their food, and also to be able to share in the celebration of Joel Cox's life. So that was um, a memorable experience. Also, uh, we celebrated, I was able to celebrate with the Arc Light Project, uh, which was run by the Reverend Nelson and his colleagues. Um, and this was to acknowledge the work of volunteers in the support of the Night Shelter Program, which was run from January to March 2019 in Birkenhead. And this existed, this ensured no one was homeless on the streets of Birkenhead during those very cold months. What impressed us most was the total commitment of the volunteers and workers to support homeless, homeless people through hard times, and that was just amazing. And finally, we also went to a um, book start week and we were able to share the opening of the book start week which was at West Carby Library. This was a wonderful opportunity to see so many babies and toddlers at the start of the reading journey which, who were well supported by the small army of librarians and other workers and volunteers and plus their parents. So those were just a few of the experiences, lots of others, lots of other experiences over the last two, two, two months. Can I also say at this stage that um, because it's so hot in this chamber that, um, you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to remove your jackets, feel free to do so, both at this meeting and also at the next council meeting. Okay, I will, announce, I, I will announce when the voting system, which you're all familiar with, is activated and when voting on a particular matter is closed. I want to remind members they must be seated in their allocated positions to vote and proxy voting is not allowed. Members are required to press the appropriate voting button in front of them, green in support Red against are white if abstaining. Voting choices will be displayed on the monitor screens in the form of a seating plan. At the conclusion of the vote, a summary screen will display the total votes cast and will list individual members' choices relating to the subject in question. Right, our first item this evening is the environment and climate emergency. I have been... Uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, can I ask a question ahead of all of this point? Uh, before this is moved and seconded, are you aware that on the 10th of December 2018, the Council declared the climate emergency, and yet tonight we're being asked to declare this again? Can I ask why? Mayor, there is a bar on council debating the same issues uh, within six months, uh, and this is the motion as it's been received, which uh, I also believe is materially different from the one uh, in December. Can, can I just put another clarity then? In the last climate emergency we declared, we resolved to write to Prime Minister. 
the Leader of the Council did write to the Prime Minister, and yet here we are asking to write to the Prime Minister again.
We are in danger of bequeathing war and famine on our own children. The IPCC report of October 2018 and the IPBS report of this year were not written by France. They were compiled by world leading scientists and they show that if we don't drastically change our attitude to material consumption, if we don't stop pouring the resulting carbon emissions into the atmosphere, if we don't reduce our waste, we will heat up our planet well above the point of no return in just over a decade. A decade, not much more now, is all we have left to acknowledge that we have been far too wasteful, far too irresponsible, far too careless with our only planet, our only home. Not just our home, but a home to countless millions of other species, many extinct now because of us, and the rest utterly dependent on the decisions we now make. If we accept the evidence and take responsibility for our future, then we can turn this around enough to survive. If we don't, then in only 30, 40 years' time, we could be fighting over the few areas of land left that aren't drought-stricken or flooded. The predictions are dire. They've been dire before in human history, and we've survived. But this is different. We don't seem to realise how close we are to grave danger. That is why we are joining with those other councils across the country in declaring an environment and climate emergency, so that we can inform people of the true nature of the dangers we all face, that we can adapt our lifestyles and accept bold decisions aimed at successfully fighting the battle against climate change, that we can unite against this common enemy and all pull together, do our bit for future generations, that we may learn from generations past and judge our achievements, not on how much we own or how new our possessions are, but on how we reduce, reuse and recycle, how well we make do and mend. I'd like to pass my grandfather's medals on to my own grandchildren. But such a dream of the future requires urgent action now. I urge you to support this declaration and the action plan to follow. Let us make sure that we join the effort in the war against climate change. And in this spirit, we are happy to accept the amendments to the motion, which include measures we are either already setting in motion or about to do so. We owe this to our children and grandchildren. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. to do as we're all borough council is to identify measures that we can take 
that are going to contribute towards the solution. And that's why I'm anxious that uh, the Council should build upon Liz Gray's motion, Mr Mayor, setting out a few practical proposals. Now clearly what I have put on the amendment is not a comprehensive list. But I suggest, firstly, that we need to stem the loss of world's trees. then two replacement saplings should oh, be planted. Oh, and why not? And why not involve public schools? Stop a tree could be planted for every pupil leaving primary school, giving them a permanent stake in world landscape. And we need to protect local agriculture from development, conserving our green belt and supporting localised food Ooh. production. Yeah. 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 The, um, the, the use of allotments, encourage those and uh, we say encourage biodiversity in our urban areas. Yeah. We cannot tackle a climate emergency and imagine that our current lifestyles will be unaffected. We need a radical shift in transport. The switch from diesel and petrol vehicles to electric powered cars has to be accelerated. We can play a part in that by encouraging the change by rolling out more uh, a bigger network of charging points across the borough. And better still, we need to reverse the decline in public transport. Because traffic is a factor that spoils our environment. It's, it spoils our enjoyment of most towns and villages. And we just don't realise how pleasant most places could be free from the noise, stress and pollution that traffic causes. At the March Council, there was um, unanimous support for my proposal that we should seek to invest in a solar energy farm. Creating green energy is an essential step to yes. decarbonising our economy. And I trust the new cabinet will take the council's recommendation of that meeting seriously and act upon it. Over the coming months and years, green initiatives should be a permanent element of our agenda. As Pat Cleary's motion says, climate emergency relates to all aspects of council activities. Mr. Mayor, we cannot just pay lip service to climate change. Greta Thunberg told the World Economic Forum in Davos, our house is on fire. Are we going to do something about putting the flames out?
about some of the flood prone areas in Wirral. So Mr Mayor, we can dismiss absolutely any idea that climate breakdown is just a future problem. Some of the major tragedies around the world, like the war in Syria, the migration crisis in Europe, the humanitarian crisis on the United States border, all of these have their roots in prolonged drought that has destroyed farming communities and forced people to migrate from where they were born to somewhere else. And that is surely what uh, David Attenborough is talking about when he refers to civilization collapse. Because all of this is happening with just one degree of warming. And we are well on course for three, four degrees plus of warming if we don't do something radical about it. So I would say, Mr Mayor, that the science behind the main motion is looking already rather dated. And the tone is corresponding, lacking, I would say, in urgency. We need a greater degree of urgency. One example is this focus on electric vehicles, which is mentioned in the motion. Councillor Brain has also just mentioned it. But think about it. If we're going to change all the private vehicles from diesel and petrol to electric, that's millions and millions of tonnes of steel and aluminium. It's billions of tonnes of raw materials that have to be mined, processed, smelted. The carbon footprint of such a manoeuvre is absolutely colossal. The only really green solution, consistent with a climate emergency, is switching from private to public and active travel. So Mr Mayor, business as usual is simply not an option. We must rethink every single aspect of our society. The food we eat, the buildings we live in and work in, our transport systems, our energy systems, the clothes we wear, absolutely everything. And perhaps above all, Mr Mayor, we need to end the obsession with economic growth. Yes. Yeah. 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 End of economic growth that's simply delivered a throwaway society, a piece of plastic in the oceans, and now we are threatened with civilization collapse itself. Yeah. Let's go GDP and start talking about our environment more and the well-being of our citizens. So our council despite all the financial pressures we face, and I do acknowledge them, I acknowledge them that we're very limited in what we can do, but we have a vital role to play. There's lots of things we can do. Some of them are mentioned in the motion and the amendment. But for example, we can take meat off, off the menu in official, um, official occasions, and we can work with our partners in the health service in schools to start moving our diet away from carbon-heavy meat and fish towards plant-based, healthier diets. We can change our transport spend, we can shift it away from private transport towards public transport and active travel. And perhaps most acutely of all, we can prepare the greenest local plan in the entire country. Yes. That's what we have to do. So Mr Mayor, the Green Party is ready to support this council in doing the right thing, beginning with the modest answers in our amendment, and I'm delighted to hear that the Labour groups will be accepted. But these are just essential building blocks to totally transforming the way we operate. But likewise, Mr Mayor, the Green Party will call out the other parties when they propose policies that take us in the wrong direction. I will just conclude by saying, Mr Mayor, that declaring a climate emergency is not a free lunch. It's merely the first step in placing our environment where it has always belonged, but never lived, at the forefront of all the decisions that we take. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I would be really grateful if, if speakers could keep mm -hmm. in their time and really would be because we, we, we can hear a lot more people in that um, this evening. Thank you. It's very important. Okay. Um, now, um, move on to have we got any other speakers? And I'll make this clear. We've got three minutes to address the council. Right. Councillor uh, Gillian Wood. Gillian, I know this is Gillian's maiden speech. Um, so, <laughs> 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 okay, I'd like to start by saying how pleased I am that our new leadership team have brought this motion before Council and that we have created a new portfolio position headed by my friend and colleague, mm -hmm. Councillor Liz Gray, in order to ensure that actions follow our words today. In declaring a climate emergency, it is recognition of the clear threat that we face, and it is one that none of us in this chamber can be complacent about. 
The difficult part will be creating and implementing policy that affects the necessary change to improve our environment. It's really easy. Climate and air policy on our peninsula and to make our contribution to limiting our regions and our country's impact on rising global temperatures. Clean air and climate is an area I've been working on the Liverpool City region for the past two years. First as a member of the scrutiny committee that helped shape the Air Quality Action Plan and then for the last 12 months as a deputy portfolio holder for low carbon and renewable energy. We are blessed in this region to massively benefit from a low carbon economy. We are blessed with our geography, the necessary skills in academia, industry and local and devolved government. And now the final piece of the jigsaw, the political will to implement the change that many of our residents tell us that they want. We can already see tangible benefits of renewable systems here in Wirral, an example being our own very own Wirral Met, who have recently installed an innovative PV panel and storage system that has helped save enough money to employ three more support staff. Currently, this council approximately spends around about a million pound a minute on energy bills. And if we look at the appropriate renewable energy sources, think of the capacity that we could free up, free up for the vital services that we all in this council want to deliver. Currently, 15% of the UK renewable capacity is in our region. We are a centre for hydrogen production, storage and transportation, and have the largest offshore, offshore wind farm in the world. The low carbon economy is coming, and if we deliver on this commitment, we must focus on planning and education. If this pledge is to be worth anything, then as a council we need to bring, bring, we need to bring our communities with us, show the economic benefits through jobs and skills that the low carbon economy will bring to us. We must also ensure that the drive to a low carbon economy is bipartisan effort and everyone here today will stand up to those such as Trump who seek to defend fossil fuel industries and deny modern science. I believe that we on Wirral, if this council can act in a unified manner, can be the place where you can learn, develop, manufacture and transport the low carbon <coughs> technologies. I hope that all members here tonight will support this environment and climate emergency motion, but more importantly, will commit to positively contribute to the debate and going forward in order to reach a consensus. I came into politics to try and affect change by working with others, seeking out where we can agree, not focusing on where we differ, and I hope that on this very important matter, this will also be your ambition. adopt to fit in with it. 
I was united this morning driving to a meeting and I saw the flashing motorway signs on the M53 urging us to go 50. There was I trundling along, obediently trying to do 50. Virtually everyone hurtled past. And the metaphor is this. Drivers, all of us in our activities, take, don't look ahead to see why things need to be done. But our danger is that we will have a car crash of our own affect the lives of future generations. So now we see the warning signs we need to act in benefit and for the future generations. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And can I, uh, on behalf of the Conservative Group, congratulate Councillor Wood on her first speech uh, to Council. Uh, Mr Mayor, prior to this debate, when we were first given notice of it, uh, I thought, well, this is an opportunity to write to about 600 people in my ward, in Wallasey Ward, mainly younger voters, but a number of other voters as well, to ask what they thought of a climate emergency. We often hear that young people are the drivers behind the uh, demands to adopt a climate emergency. Uh, and I have to say that the responses from the survey that I've seen so far uh, will confirm that. Let me read a couple of them to you, Mr Mayor. Um, a young person called Millie, when I asked her what do you think is the biggest threat to the environment, she said, increasing CO2 levels, disrupting our ocean levels and its, and its residents, people not recycling, lack of habitats and woodland areas. Somebody called Coral, when I said, should the Royal Council declare a climate emergency, said yes. And when I said, why do you ask, why do you think the big, what do you think is the biggest threat to the environment, she said, people. Somebody called Taylor, uh, again, when I said, what do you think is the biggest threat to the environment, he replied, humans. And another one, Mr Mayor, somebody called Tom, when I said, what do you think is the biggest threat to the environment, he said, plastic pollution. Mr Mayor, the debate that we've had so far has been good on aspirations, and it's good on intent. As I think it was Councillor Graham said, as a local authority, we have to look at what practical measures we can do to contribute to a, a national and a global situation where we can start to affect the uh, deterioration in the climate. Mr Mayor, we've heard already that the Council voted some months ago to adopt a plan to build a solar farm. That was the first time, I think that was the last time we've heard of it. Nothing, as far as I'm aware, has been done on that call by Council. We also, many years ago as a Council, agreed to adopt carbon budgets so that every report, every, every uh, measure we took as a Council, on a committee or in Cabinet, would have its carbon budget implications listed in that report. Those carbon budget implications were soon dropped and they haven't been seen since. We also have, as a borough, we have 1,800 people, 1,800 people currently waiting for an allotment site. There are 1,800 plots in Wirral, and 1,800 people are waiting for a plot. We have the government has recently made, a, I think it's a £10 million fund available for new trees. I'm still waiting to hear whether Wirral has bid for a share of that money. Some years ago, the government also made money available to introduce electric charging points. World Council decided not to apply for any of that money. And then the biggest issue, of course, of, of all, is how we, how we work with the green belt. And here we have a, a plan, still by the administration, to build houses on our green belt. Yeah. We cannot pass resolutions that call for a climate emergency while in this council chamber pursuing policies that do the opposite, Mr. Mayor. Yeah.
Around about something like 70,000 years ago, our earliest identifiable ancestors developed themselves above other species as hunter-gatherers. Eventually, the thousands of years went by and they gradually developed little um, villages. Thousands more years went by and they invented social organization, then bigger tribes and small towns and then cities and then all that goes with those things, including avarice and exploitation and wars and all, all of that was the almost inevitable way that a species which had transcendency over the others was going to develop. Our species have been the, the alpha predators of the earth, but it's happened at such an alarming rate that very few historians have really, until lately, begun to understand how devastatingly quick it's all happened. We really are now at the point where there's a difference which is within sight, which is an astronomical distance. It will make things like the, like the cognitive revolution, like the industrial revolution, look like absolute peanuts. Because what it means is that within our generation, and I'm 75, I'm still talking about what I'll see in what's left of my generation, I'll see my children.